Hi there everyone and welcome back. In this video we're going to see file I.O. or file input and output in C Sharp. Until now in this C Sharp series we have stored data in variables or in a data structure like lists or arrays and as soon as our program closes this data is lost. A way to solve this problem is by storing our data in a file so that all of our information will be saved even after we close the program. In this video, we'll see how we can work with files, how we can write and read data from them, so just keep on watching. So here I have just opened up a console application project in Visual Studio. Here I have a program class and then a normal standard main method. What I'm going to do firstly to before we create the file and store text into it. I'm just going to take input from the user. So firstly, I'm just going to print a message in the console to let's give a message to the user. Let's say let's say enter a name. And then just underneath, I'm going to use the console that read line method to take the user's input. And I'm actually going to store this input in a variable in a string variable. I'm just naming it input here. And what I'm going to do then after we write a text in our console, after we write a name, and we're just going to use the file class that write all text method. So this is the method that we're going to use. What this method does is that it creates a file and inputs a string that we specify into it and then it closes the file. If the file already exists, this method just overrides the content of that file with the string that we specify here. So this method takes two arguments. The first argument is the name of the file. Let's say new file. If this file does not exist, this method will create it and I'm going to make it new file.txt. So a text file. The second argument will take a string. So here I'm going to give the input that we created above. So if I run the program here, firstly we should see a prompt to enter a name. Here we see the console, enter name. I'm just going to use some name here like Matthew click on enter and that's it for now. So we should actually try to find this file if it was created or not. This file will actually be created in the directory where this project that we're working on is saved. So to find it faster, I'm just gonna input the name of the file in the search bar here, that txt. Here we see this file and the location of the file where it's in the same directory where our console application project is saved. So I'll just click on it to open it up. And we should actually see the new file here and the name Matthew printed into it. So if we would actually just run the program again so that we'll see how this method works, let me just do it here. If I enter another name like John in this file, if I open up the file again, so it was this new file document, we see John. So the first name that we wrote was overwritten and that's how actually this method works. Each time we run the application, each time this method works, it overrides the file with the content that it already has. But what, how we could process in this case if we would want to just add a name after another name? Actually, in those cases, we are going to need to add to use another method, which is the method append all text. So append all text. So this method, what it basically does, we could have used this method since the beginning. If the file does not exist, it creates the file. And if it does, it just appends the input that we give to this file one after another. So that the 
names that we input, the text that we input into the file are not printed just one attached to the, to the other one. We can just add a new line after each input. So for this reason, I'm just going to use this, the string interpolation here. So I'm just going to use the double quotation marks in the beginning, in the end, we need this dollar sign here. And after we take the input, I'm just going to need to write slash here and for a new line. Let's just run the program and see how this works. So let me just add another name like, I don't know, something with Z. So Z. I'll run the program again and I will input another name like Aaron. Run the program here and let me just find the file just again. Here, what we see here, we see that Z was inputted after John, but without a space, and then Aaron was saved in a new line. This happened actually because, firstly, when we created, when we used the write all text method, when we made the input here, we didn't enter a new line at the end. That's why Z is just attached to John. We could actually just could have used this since the beginning, for, but for me to make it faster, I'm just gonna input the new line manually here and save the file. Or we could have used this in the beginning when we created the file. So as we saw here, we saw two methods to write text into a file. Now we're gonna see another method of the file class to actually read the content of the file. This method is called read all text and it takes one argument, it takes the name of the file which is new file, so it reads the content of the file and then closes the file. That's what this method does. So for us to actually see the output of this file, I'm going to need to use the console.write line method. And for us to not add any other name to, to our program, I'm just going to comment these lines out. So if I run the program here, let me just see it. We see only all of the elements, all of the text that our file has. We see John, Seth, and Aaron. So actually a practice when we read, we read specific data from a file, it is a good practice, it's a common practice that we, if we want, for example, to modify the content of our file or to make sure that the file is structured in a, sim in a specific way, we actually get the data from the file, we store them in a data structure, let's say a list, we make the modification or the for format that we want the data to, to be presented, and that's the example I'm gonna make right now. So actually I'm just gonna create a simple list here, a list of strings. So I'm naming it just list since it was already pre-made here. New list, a list of strings. And this is the way we declare a list. So I'm just gonna comment this line out for now. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna need the for each loop to loop each every line of our file. So for each, let's say line in file dot read all lines. So I'm gonna use this method right now, which just reads through all of the lines of our text file. this. So basically what this does is that it reads through every line of our file. I'm just going to need to specify, it takes an argument, I'm going to specify the file name which was new file.txt and each line of our file I'm just going to add to our list that we created. So I'm writing here list.add and then a line. So in this point here, we have added all of our all of the lines in this list that we created here. And down below, we can actually do what we want to the list. Let's say we want to 
list the items we want to sort the items that the list has so we're using this sort method here it just sorts the items that the list has alphabetically so they should be listed out in an alphabetical order so after doing this and can also just use a for each loop again to just print each item of the list in the console so for each item in list I'm just gonna print each item out of the console. Let me run the program. We should see Aaron in the first place, then John, and then Zed. So these were the main things you need to know to start working with files in C Sharp. I'm gonna leave the link down below where you can check the .NET documentation for the other methods you can use to work with files. And thank you so much for watching as always, just make sure to stay tuned for the few remaining videos of this C-Sharp series.